Well, hey there, YouTube and Facebook. Uh, I know it's been quite a while since uh, I've done any videos, so today I decided to make a little update video for you guys, um, and we're going to do it live. So, um, so right now I'm standing in front of our beehives here. I'm going to spin around so you can see them here. Um, so first things first, um, they're doing well at the moment, but this year was a little bit of a challenge starting off. Um, our first, this hive here, um, no, we'll start with the one that's not there at the moment. Um, but the hive that was in that location, it swarmed pretty early in the spring. Um, so they, they up and just left half of them. Um, so, and then what happened was they, they never, uh, they didn't properly uh, bring up a new queen, so they they made some queen cells, but they never uh, made any queens from them for whatever reason. Um, so they ended up going queenless. And now we'll move over to this hive, and I'll come back to that one in a second. So this hive was doing really well in the spring, um, so well that it was getting ready to swarm. So rather than letting it swarm, we decided to um, split the hive. So we split it removed the queen and five frames of brood and put them in another box over here. Um, and then they ended up properly rearing up a new queen. So they are now thriving again successfully. Um, so now back to the hive that was here that went queenless. Um, they actually started to lay, uh, the worker bees started to lay drones uh, so we, uh, what we decided to do is to combine the hive that we split from this hive and combine it with the two hives, both those hives. So that's what's going on right now. We, we had two supers um, that were with the queenless hive and we added the super from the hive that we split and we did uh, added uh, newspaper in between the two hives um, to prevent them from fighting. Um, so that's what they're doing right now. As you can see, newspaper shreds everywhere. Um, what they did was uh, um, chewed through the newspaper slowly and slowly acclimated themselves to each other and accepted the new queen. And so now they are doing quite well. Um, we're going to soon move them back to the stand over here and get them out of the yard. Um, so yeah, that's our bees at the current situation. Um, they're doing very well, like I said. Now, uh, while I got you all here, I figured I'd give you a little tour of the rest of our little um, tiny farmstead in the city. So here we have our greenhouse that I built, what was it, two years ago. Um, it's still holding up quite well. Um, it's, if you remember, um, I accidentally built it with the wrong um, panels. Uh, the, the clear panels that I used are more designed for um, sunrooms and such inside of a house, uh, and they don't like high temperatures. So the manufacturers actually contacted me and told me that, hey, these aren't designed for greenhouses. Um, and they offered to uh, sell me um, the proper panels at cost um, because they said that these won't last very long. So I, I took them up on the offer, except said that I would wait until, um, until this goes bad, basically. So it's been, this is the second year, I believe, and you can see some of the areas that get hotter than others are starting to turn uh, black and darken, discolor. Um, that's from the heat uh, buildup. So uh, hopefully I can get a couple more years out of it before I need to uh, install the proper panels. Um, now we'll move on. Here we have my uh, homemade composter made out of a barrel. Works quite nice. Um, up here we have our grapes. They are doing really well this year. Uh, let's see if we can find some up in there somewhere. Uh, it might be too hard to see them through the meshing, but they're, believe me, they're in there. The mesh is there to keep the birds out. The birds absolutely love fresh grapes. Um, now we'll move on to the garden. Oh, first, 
I installed a nice little water barrel, rain barrel, to water the plants from. There's a couple goldfish in there. You can't really see them, they're hiding. Um, so that came out quite well. Um, the garden's doing well, lots of peppers. Um, we got kale, we got lots of tomatoes. The tomatoes are ready, that's what all these dead plants are. Uh, when they're ready to go, they, the plants die and then you dig up the potatoes. Uh, over here we have our figs. Uh, they're coming in quite nicely. Uh, a couple here are ready to pick almost. Right, there's one that's actually starting to split open. Uh, that's from the large amounts of rain that we recently had. Uh, we got some grapes here that I'm propagating to uh, grow next year. So give them to people or sell them or do whatever. And I also have a few small fig trees that I'm starting. Uh, we got more fig, fig trees over here. Lots of nice baby figs coming out on them. Then we'll move back over here to our apricot trees. Our apricots did absolutely phenomenal this year. Um, first time we've ever gotten ap apricots from them actually. Uh, mainly due to the fact that they blossom really early in the spring and this spring they did not get frosted off, so they all survived. Um, the first tree in the middle here, this one, um, is a, a super sweet variety. Um, it, it tasted almost like a, a peach rather than a fig tree, or a apricot. Um, so from uh, this larger tree, we, I, we made uh, roughly 30 pints of apricot jam from this one tree. Uh, so we're gonna be eating lots of apricot jam. Nice little banana tree. Oh, and we have a um, pear tree over here that is as well. It has pears on it. First, first pears I've ever gotten on it. Um, they're looking, there's about six or so on it. They're doing really well. I'm super excited to try them out this year. And then we'll see my cactus there, my six foot tall cactus. Come back over here. We got some zucchinis, and there we got some basil. Lots of different pepper types. Here we have my uh, mushroom logs. Uh, let's brighten it up here a little bit. They're in the shade. Um, they're uh, shiitake mushrooms, um, as well as some mint growing around them. It's just a type of wild mint I found out growing in the wild. Pretty, pretty tasty in teas and such. Uh, and then let's continue over here. Ooh, now we're too bright. Okay, so here we got some borage for the bees. Apparently borage makes really nice, flavorful, tasty um, honey. So we got that. And then over here, we have a new, um, just planted this this spring. It's a uh, peach tree and again it's got four or five peaches that are looking quite nicely growing on it and we have another grape here this is a uh, two concord grapes and there's a couple grapes on it Bethany was really happy to get these grapes they are her favorite kind of grape and you can see a couple hanging on there hopefully the birds don't get them but uh, there's not enough is on there this year to worry about protecting them with the net but next year we might put a net over it. So now onto my last thing I wanted to talk about. Um, last year, uh, some friends and I floated down the muddy creek. Uh, we took my pelican cooler with me and I took a couple really cool photos um, of the pelican cooler and Brandon Hoot, Hoot uh, in, in his tube floating down beside it. And I recently submitted that photo into a uh, contest through Pelican um, and I'm currently in the top 10 of the contest and I could really appreciate some help. Um, right now it's uh, into the public voting phase, so I need people to vote for my Pelican case photo. So if you can, go to the link in the description um, and click vote. Um, we have until the end of this month, which is uh, July, and 
you can vote once per day. So every single day, it would be really cool if you all could go there and click vote for the photo of Brandon floating down the muddy creek uh, beside this pelican cooler. Um, if I win, we can get uh, $1,500 worth of pelican gear. So that'll be pretty cool. It'll help uh, buy more pelican gear and we can protect all of our camera gear and whatnot. They also make some pretty cool uh, drink coolers and um, drink cozies and um, vacuum sealed uh, coolers uh, or vacuum sealed um, bottles is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, so anyway, that's all I have for you today. Um, please like and subscribe to my channel to learn more about our awesome um, urban homesteading in York City. Thank you very much. See you next time.